All right, so 2020 has just begun, but we already have a brand new um, running model from Nike, and this one is known as the React Infinity. And I wanted to give you guys my two cents and some pros and cons purely from a casual perspective. What is going on guys, Hess here, CollectiveKicks.com. If you guys would like to shop this week's top sneaker deals that I posted for you guys, or if you guys want to buy a pair, check the links in the description and happy shopping. Today though, we have this Nike React Infinity Run Flying It. Starting off first, we'll show you guys the box. It says right here, the Nike React Infinity Run FK for Flying It. Box price is $160 and I got a true to size 9.5, which I will say it actually fits me just fine. I think that this is an adjustment or a change from the um, Epic React, at least the first one, because I did go up half a size in the first, I think, and the second one. So these fit more true to size than the Epic Reacts. If you guys want a comparison video between this model and the Pegasus Turbo 2s, the Ultra Boost 20s, and the Epic Reacts, and I can basically do a comparison of these to the other three and let you guys know the things I like and dislike about each of the models, leave a comment or a like on this video and let me know and I will work on that video because I think it's a valuable one even from a casual perspective because um, face it, like not everybody just runs in these shoes. You wear these out and about, you walk around um, and so that's kind of like what these, these are. They're basically everyday shoes, not just running shoes. So now that we know this is a casual video as I always mention because this is a casual sneaker channel but... Um, I wanted to give you guys anyway some uh, just some information about the sneaker for those interested in the technology. First things first, there's a new version of the Flyknit technology. It's actually known as a Flyknit Loft technology, which is stronger and more durable than the previous iterations. It actually features three distinct layers underneath uh, one another, so it's kind of interesting that they're doing that, but I kind of like it. Then other parts of the shoe, such as the collar right here, is just a regular flying in, it looks like. So the shoe obviously features Nike React cushioning technology, which is actually one that I've been quite a fan of since the Epic React, the very first one that we tried a couple years ago. And now this is basically like an Epic React 3. I mean, it looks very similar to the Epic React, but they feel on feet like the Epic React's much stronger college cousin or brother or something like that. Like these ones are much, much better, much more felt than on the Epic React. So they've definitely done a lot to improve from the first iteration of the Epic React. Uh, one of the things is the amount of React in the midsole is 24% more than on the Epic Reacts, I believe. Also, you could see the traction on the bottom. They've improved it a lot because there was a huge gap here from the previous models, and I hated that. I thought it was just the worst design flaw. In fact, that was my biggest complaint about it because it makes it look like it's completely destroyed after a month and it really is destroyed except for the React technology actually holds up over time. It just makes it look really dingy and dirty. So the fact that they have that there, I think will help it. Another thing to note on the upper is you see the Nike swoosh is a really interesting, weird design. It's kind of like a highlight of a swoosh here and it comes down for the top part, but it never connects to the bottom part here. And underneath here is like a fused material that goes around to the heel cup of the shoe. So they're trying to, I don't know, like do something neat with that, but I, I just didn't really like the look of it. Some people might like it though, and it probably adds a lot of functionality um, to the stability of the shoe. And this definitely is pretty rugged feeling, which is nice. It's just, I don't know the overall design element of it. I'm not super impressed by. Underneath that though, you do have a hard plastic uh, that goes around the collar of the shoe. And this is actually pretty nice. This is a stability plate basically for the React. So you're not uh, going all over the place, which uh, considering how squishy this midsole is and how soft and light the midsole is, this is actually probably pretty important to make sure that these are keeping you uh, on your toes and not injured, which is something that basically this pair of sneakers is trying to help eliminate uh, the reduction of injury. There's a really fine line when you have footwear between stability and cushioning. Obviously, they're like almost polar opposites because if you have cloud-like feel, then usually you feel like you're going to fall through a cloud. You don't have the stability to make you um, not want to roll your ankle or, 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 you know, hurt yourself. I just want to give you guys a quick breakdown of some of the pros and cons about uh, the model. First pro is that the traction is definitely better than the Epic React. Uh, really, really nice traction. I mean, the fact that they went all the way through uh, the sole of the shoe, very, very important in my opinion. Um, something that's, I think a lot of people are going to find improvement on just because they did that. That was my, one of my biggest complaints and they fixed that, which I think is awesome. Anyway, the next pro is the Flyknit Loft material. I actually like the upper. I mean, it's kind of like the Pegasus Turbos, but I really like this over just the regular Flyknit. I mean, I'm kind of burnt out on the regular Flyknit stuff. It was a little too snug. This is still snug, don't get me wrong, and stretchy. 
Uh, but I like that it feels like it's a little bit protected with that clear layer. As much as they've been reusing that clear, breathable layer over top of the shoes, they've been using it on pretty much everything. Uh, I really like what they've done on this one. Price point is only $160 for a flagship. I mean, I guess the Epic React was $150, so $160 is $10 more. But honestly, when you put them on feet, they feel like they're worth more than $10 more than what the Epic React offered. Um, they're significantly better than the previous versions. Also adding in the pro section that they do fit true to size, at least to myself, from a casual perspective. Obviously, you guys need to try them on to uh, see how they fit for yourselves. But for me, true to size work just fine. The next pro is the Nike React material is very, very soft. It's durable, it's light, it's responsive. It's basically like the thing that Nike needed to uh, move to the next level. I mean, I know that they've done React on a ton of different things, but tried and true for the last couple of years, I really like the product. And it definitely reminds me of Adidas Boost, except for you don't have to have the pellet look, which I don't necessarily know why they do all the different shapes in the midsoles of React. Maybe they're trying to reduce the uh, the creases, I don't know. But these crease really, really easy. But I guess that's something I would be mentioning in the con section. Uh, next pro, 24% more React than the Epic React 2. Definitely feels like 24% more. I think that's kind of hilarious because the Adidas Ultra Boost to the Ultra Boost 19 in the 20s, the difference there is about 20% more boost in the Ultra Boost 19 and 20s versus regular Ultra Boost. And it's like, Nike's like, let's do 4% more. Nike likes their 4%. So 24% it is, and it's felt, and they did a good job with that. Again, I already mentioned it, great improvements over the Epic React. And if you want to see the comparison between those two, uh, let me know in the comment section again. And also, I'll add in the Cruiser 1s, because those are another one that I think are absolutely amazing. If you guys missed my review video, or after wearing a month video, which I got a lot of heat on because they were dirty, um, you know, it was one day in the mud, and that's all it took to get that mud look, but I wore those things a ton, um, and that video is pretty solid if you can get past uh, all of the, the negativity of around the, the dirtiness of the shoe, uh, but it is what it is. Anyway, moving on, the wide base is the next pro. It is definitely super wide in the front, and it's pretty wide in the back. I love the fact that there's a wide track pattern. Somebody that has a wider foot, I just think it's a smart move, but also this is a really functional move too, because a wider platform means that you have more stability, uh, than something up more narrow and the wider it is the, the you know the less likely you're going to roll something and i do like that they did some added reinforcements here for the stability um it is noticeable you feel pretty stable in these you, you don't feel like you're going to be uh topping over left or right on the shoe uh for a running shoe i know you're supposed to go straight but they did a good job on stability uh, for those times where you don't land perfectly straight some of the cons though i wanted to mention the first one i already did but the react material creases a lot of people complain about that and the fact that it gets really, really dirty pretty easily. I'm sure underneath parts down here will still look like crap after the first handful of wears, but it is what it is. Um, at least this time we have coverage across the entire thing. I gotta be somewhat critical and say that I really don't like the colorways. I don't like the theme color of this shoe with the neon around the ankle, that weird like bronzy pink um, fused material here. It looks like fish scales, black half swoosh, and then gray and black. I, I just, overall, I just really dislike this colorway. The only reason why I bought it is because it's the very first one uh, of the new launch, unfortunately, because I would have much rather had something else. Another con I would mention is, it's basically an Epic React 3. They're just calling it something else to try to rebrand uh, the shoe. Maybe they're gonna have an Epic React 3. I really don't know, uh, but maybe it got a little bit stale. The Epic React 2 lost a lot of energy, and so it feels like they had to um, throw down Infinity on here to make it known that these are the Infinity Reacts, not the uh, the Epic Reacts. Another thing that I'll mention as a con, which is something I always nitpick about with Nike, because I don't like that they can't be consistent, but this is the Nike React Infinity Run there, but here it's the Infinity React. I just wish they would be consistent across how they're gonna market an item and what they're gonna be calling it. And then on the side of the shoe right there, it's actually Flyknit, it says. It doesn't say Flyknit Loft. I feel like if you're gonna rebrand something in a different way, you should rebrand the thing in a different way. That's me nitpicking. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be like, shut up, Hess, you, you're just a little whiner, baby. Um, I'm tired and it's late, so maybe that's half of it, and I, I probably should go downstairs and have a whiskey. I'll work on that after this video. The last con I'll mention is it's still a little bit snug in this four foot section for myself. Not a big fan of that, just because of the same build as the Epic Reacts. I didn't really like that on the Epic React either. It was tolerable. It's still a comfortable shoe, and I like that it's geared for performance, which is obvious because it's a running shoe. And casually, you can wear snug shoes as well, but overall, I just like to be able to relax the shoes 
a little bit more and unfortunately you can't do that. However, I will say because it is so snug up there, it probably lends to the fact that the shoe has that much more of a stable feel, which I can appreciate. So counterpoint to my con. Last con is the price point 160. I mean, it's kind of a pro as well because it's such a great shoe, but a lot of people aren't gonna be excited to pay 160 when you can get the Epic React 2s for like 60 or 70 bucks. Like, why would you spend an extra hundred dollars on this? Is it that much better? It's not a hundred dollars better. Um, so the pricing is a little bit interesting, but uh, you know, first out of the gate, of course, retail is what it's gonna be. After a while, the price is gonna die down. It's gonna be much more affordable. And a lot of people are really gonna enjoy these shoes once they get them on feet. So final thoughts, worth 160. I mean, it was worth it for me to try them out and it's worth it for me to tell you that they're great. I don't like this colorway, so hopefully I'll be able to sell them or something and then get another colorway. I can't decide because I think I'm gonna be wearing these for the next month so I can do a month after wearing uh, review on these to see if I break in good and how they are um, after wear. But, uh, but if you guys, again, I'll plug it one more time. If you wanna see a comparison video to the Pegasus Turbo, the Cruiser one, the um, Ultra Boost 20s, and the Epic Reacts, leave a comment and let me know or drop a like on the video. I really just wanna do that video, so please uh, do so because there's a lot of things uh, that I like about this and there's a lot of things I like about other models and comparing them side by side is a fun way to just try to decipher which is the best on my feet and let you guys know that obviously our feet are different, so it always varies. But anyways, that's the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you guys want to buy a pair of the Infinity Reacts, check the link in the description. And if you guys got a pair and I messed something up, leave a comment in the comment section and let other people know what I screwed up. Or if you bought them and you like them, leave some comments and let other people know what you liked about your purchase. But thank you again for stopping by and watching. I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Subscribe for more sneaker content, notification bell to be notified of when the videos are live and uh, more videos soon. Peace, guys.